Preface of Sun and Saddle Leather. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Eileen Tipping. Sun and Saddle Leather by Badger Clark. Preface to the Third Edition. Cowboys are the sternest critics of those who would represent the West. No hypocrisy, no bluff, no pose can evade them. Yet cowboys have made Badger Clark's songs their own. So readily have they circulated that often the man who sings the song could not tell you where it started. Many of the poems have become folk songs of the West. We may say of America, for they speak of freedom and the open. Generous has been the praise given Sun and Saddle Leather, but perhaps no criticism has summed up the work so satisfactorily as the comment of the old cowman, who said, You can break me if there's a dead poem in the book. I read the hull of it. Who in the H is this kid Clark, anyway? I don't know how he knowed, but he knows. That is what proves Badger Clark the real poet. He knows. Beyond his wonderful presentation of the West is the quality of universal appeal that makes his work real art. He has tied the West to the universe. The old cowman is not the only one who has wondered who Badger Clark was. Charles Horton Stork, speaking of sun and saddle leather, said, It has splendid flavor and fine artistic handling as well. I should like to know more of the author, whether he was a cowpuncher or merely got inside his psychology by imagination. Badger Clark was brought up in the West. As a boy, he lived in Deadwood, South Dakota. The town at that time was trying to live down the reputation for exuberant indecorum which she had acquired during the gold rush. But her five churches operating two hours a week could make little headway against the competition of two dance halls and twenty-six saloons running twenty-four hours a day. Perhaps it was these early impressions that make the piano at Red's in Mr. Clark's later volume, Grass-Grown Trails, so vivid. Scuffing feet and thud of fists, curses hot as fire. Still the music sang of love, longing, lost desire. Dreams that never could have been, joys that couldn't stay, while the man upon the floor wiped the blood away. After Clark had grown up in the cow country near the Mexican border, he stumbled unexpectedly into paradise. He was given charge of a small ranch and the responsibility for a bunch of cattle, just large enough to amuse him, but too small to demand a full day's work once a month. The sky was persistently blue, the sunlight was richly golden, the folds of the barren mountains and the wide reaches of the range were full of many lovely colors, and his nearest neighbor was eight miles away. The cowmen who dropped in for a meal now and then in the course of their interminable riding appeared to have ridden directly out of the books of adventure with old young faces full of sun wrinkles careless mouths full of bad grammar, strange oaths and stranger yarns, and hearts, for the most part, as open and shadowless as the country they daily ranged. In the evenings, as Clark placed his boot heels on the porch railing, smote the strings of his guitar, and broke the tense silence of the warm, dry twilight with song, he often wondered, as his eyes rested dreamily on the spiky yuccas that stood out sharp and black against the clear lemon color of the sunset west, why hermit life in the desert was traditionally a sad, penitential affair. In a letter to his mother a month or two after settling in Arizona, he found prose too weak to express his utter content and perpetrated his first verses. She, with natural pride, sent the verses to a magazine, 
the old Pacific Monthly, and a week or two later the desert dweller was astonished beyond measure to receive his first editorial check. The discovery that certain people in the world were willing to pay money for such rhymes as he could write bent the whole course of his subsequent life, for good or evil, and the occasional lyric impulse hardened into a habit which has consumed much of his time and most of his serious thought since that date. The verses written to his mother were Ryden, the first poem in his first book, Sun and Saddle Leather, and the greater part of the poems in both Sun and Saddle Leather and Grass-Grown Trails were written in Arizona. Sun and Saddle Leather and Grass-Grown Trails are books of Western songs, simple and ringing, and yet with an ample vision that makes them unique among poems written in a local vernacular. The spirit of them is eternal, the spirit of youth in the open, and their background is God's reserves, the vast reach of western mesa and plain that will always remain free, the way it was when the world was new. Every poem carries a breath of plains, wind-flavored with a tang of camp smoke, and varied as they are in tune and tone, they do not contain a single note that is labored or unnatural. They are of native western stock, as indigenous to the soil as the agile cow-ponies, whose hooves evidently beat the time for their swinging measures. And it is this quality as well as their appealing music, that has already given them such wide popularity, East and West. That they were born in the saddle, and written for love rather than for publication, is a conviction that the reader of them can hardly escape, from the impish merriment of From Town to the deep but fearless piety of The Cowboy's Prayer. These songs ring true and are as healthy as the big, bright country whence they came. In 1917, about the time our first edition of Sun and Saddle Leather began to run low, we fortunately discovered L. A. Huffman of Miles City, Montana, the illustrator who in 1878 began taking photographs from the saddle with crude cameras he made over to meet his needs. These same views were the first of the now-famous Huffman pictures, beginning with the Indians and buffaloes round about Fort Keogh on the Yellowstone, where he was post-photographer for General Miles' army during those stirring territorial days. The Huffman studio is still one of the showplaces of Miles City and the sales headquarters also for Montana and adjacent states for both of Mr. Clark's books, Sun and Saddle Leather and Grass-Grown Trails. In a recent letter, Mr. Huffman says, I have just come back from a trip to Powder River and along the Wyoming-Montana border. It's all too true. Clark saw and wrote it none too soon in the passing of the trail. The trail's a lane, the trail's a lane, Dead is the branding fire. The prairies wild are tame and mild, all close corralled with wire. The sunburnt demigods who ranged and laughed and loved so free have topped the last divide or changed to men like you and me. End of Preface Section 1 of Sun and Saddle Leather. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Reading by Ed Humple. Sun and Saddle Leather by Badger Clark. Riding. There is some that likes the city. Grass that's curried, smooth, and green. Theaters and strangling collars. Wagons run by gasoline. But for me it's hoss and saddle. 
every day without a change, and a desert sun a blazin on a hundred miles of range. Just a ridin, a ridin, desert ripplin in the sun, mountains blue along the skyline, I don't envy any one when I'm ridin. When my feet is in the stirrups, and my hoss is on the bust, with his hooves a flashin' lightnin' from a cloud of golden dust, and the bawlin' of the cattle is a comin' down the wind, then a finer life than ridin' would be mighty hard to find. Just a ridin', a ridin', splittin' long cracks through the air, stirrin' up the baby cyclone, rippin' up the prickly pear, as I'm ridin'. I don't need no art exhibits when the sunset does her best, paintin' everlastin' glory on the mountains to the west. And your opery looks foolish when the night bird starts his tune, and the desert's silver mounted by the touches of the moon. Just a ridin', a ridin', who can envy kings and czars when the coyotes down the valley are a-singin' to the stars if he's ridin'? When my earthly trail is ended, and my final bacon curled, and the last great round-ups finished at the home ranch of the world. I don't want no harps nor halos, robes nor other dressed-up things. Let me ride the starry ranges on a pinto hoss with wings. Just a-ridin', a-ridin', nothing I'd like half so well as a-roundin' up the sinners that have wandered out of hell, and a-ridin'. End of section one. Section two of Sun and Saddle Leather by Badger Clark. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. The Song of the Leather. When my trail stretches out to the edge of the sky, through the desert so empty and bright, and I'm watching the miles as they go crawling by, and I hope and I'll get there by night. Then my hoss never speaks through the long sunny day, but my saddle he sings in his creaky old way, easy, 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 for a temperate pace ain't a crime. Let your mount hit it steady, but give him his ease, for the sun hammers hard and there's never a breeze. We can get there in plenty of time. When I'm after some critter that's hit the high lope, and a spurrin' my hoss till he flies, when I'm watchin' the chances for throwin' my rope and a winkin' the sweat from my eyes, then the leathers they squeal with the lunge and the swing, and I work to the livelier tune that they sing. Reach him, reach him, reach him, if you lather your hoss to the heel. There's time to be slow and time to be quick, never mind if it's rough and the bushes are thick. Pull your hat down and fling in the steel. When I've rustled all day till I'm aching for rest, and I'm ordered a night guard to ride, with the tired little moon hanging low in the west, and my sleepiness fighting my pride, then I nod and I blink at the dark herd below, and the saddle he sings as my hoss paces slow. Sleepy, 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 we was ordered a close watch to keep. But I'll sing you a song in a drowsy old key. All the world is a snoozin', so why shouldn't we? Go to sleep, partner mine. Go to sleep. End of section two. Section three of Sun and Saddle Leather by Badger Clark. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. A Bad Half Hour Wonder why I feel so restless. Moon is shining still and bright. Cattle all is rest and easy, but I just can't sleep tonight. Ain't no cactus in my blankets. Don't know why they feel so hard. Less it's Warble and Jim a-singin'. Annie Laurie out on guard. Annie Laurie. Wish he'd quit it. Couldn't sleep now if I tried. Makes the night seem big and lonesome, and my throat feels sore inside. How my Annie used to sing it, and it sounded good and gay. 
Nights I drove her home from dances when the east was turning gray. Yes, her brow was like the snowdrift, and her eyes like quiet streams, and her face, I still can see it, much too frequent in my dreams, and her hand was soft and trembly that night underneath the tree, when I couldn't help but tell her she was all the world to me. But her folks said I was shiftless, wild, unsettled. They was right, for I leaned to punchin' cattle, and I'm at it still tonight. And she married young Doc Wilkins. Oh, my Lord, but that was hard. Wish that fool would quit his singin', Annie Laurie, out on guard. Oh, I just can't stand it thinkin' of the things that happened then. Good old times, and all a past me never seem to come again. My turn? Sure. I'll come a-runnin'. Warm me up some coffee, pard. But I'll stop that Jim from singin'. Annie Laurie, out on guard. End of section three. Section four of Sun and Saddle Leather by Badger Clark. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. From Town We're the children of the open, and we hate the haunts of men, but we had to come to town to get the mail. And we're riding home at daybreak, cause the air is cooler then, all except one of us that stopped behind in jail. Shorty's nose won't bear parading, Bill's off eye is darkly fading, all our toilets show a touch of disarray. For we found that city life is a constant round of strife, and we ain't the breed for shyin' from a fray. Chant your war whoop, partners dear, while the east turns pale with fear, and the chaparral is tremblin' all around. For we're wicked to the mirror, we're a midnight dream of terror, when we're ridin' up the rocky trail from town. We acquired our hasty temper from our friend, the centipede. From the rattlesnake we learned to guard our rights. We have gathered fightin' pointers from the famous bronco steed, and the bobcat teached us repartee that bites. So when some high-collared heron jeered the garb that I was wearin', twasn't long till we had got where talkin' ends. And he et his ill-bred chat with a sauce of derby hat, while my merry partners entertained his friends. Sing her out, my buckaroos, let the desert hear the news, tell the stars the way we rubbed the haughty down. We're the fiercest wolves a-prowlin', and it's just our night for howlin' when we're ridin' up the rocky trail from town. Since the days that Lot and Abram split the Jordan range in halves, just to fix it so their punchers wouldn't fight. Since old Jacob skinned his dad-in-law for six years' crop of calves, and then hit the trail for Canaan in the night. There has been a taste for battle among the men that follow cattle, and a love of doin' things that's wild and strange. And the worth of Laban's words when he missed his speckled herds still is useful in the language of the range. Sing her out, my bold coyotes, leather fists and leather throats, for we wear the brand of Ishmael like a crown. We're the sons of desolation, we're the outlaws of creation, ye ow are riding the rocky trail from town. End of section four. Section 5 of Sun and Saddle Leather by Badger Clark. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. A Cowboy's Prayer, written for Mother. O oh Lord, I've never lived where churches grow. I love creation better as it stood that day you finished it so long ago, and looked upon your work and called it good. I know that others find you in the light that sifted down through tinted window panes, and yet I seem to feel you near tonight in this dim, quiet starlight on the plains. I thank you, Lord, that I am placed so well, that you have made my freedom so complete, that I am no slave of whistle, clock, or bell, nor weak-eyed prisoner of wall and street. Just let me live my life as I've begun, and give me work that's open to the sky. 
Make me a partner of the wind and sun, And I won't ask for a life that's soft or high. Let me be easy on the man that's down. Let me be square and generous with all. I'm careless sometimes, Lord, when I'm in town, But never let him say I'm mean or small. Make me as big and open as the plains, As honest as the hoss between my knees, Clean as the wind that blows behind the rains, Free as the hawk that circles down the breeze. Forgive me, Lord, if sometimes I forget, You know about the reasons that are hid. You understand the things that gall and fret. You know me better than my mother did. Just keep an eye on all that's done and said, And write me sometimes when I turn aside, And guide me on the long dim trail ahead That stretches upward toward the great divide. End of section five. Section six of Sun and Saddle Leather by Badger Clark. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. The Christmas Trail. The wind is blowing cold down the mountain tips of snow, and cross the ranges laying brown and dead. It's crying through the valley trees that wear the mistletoe, and mourning with the gray clouds overhead. Yet it's sweet with the beat of my little hoss's feet, And I whistle like the air was warm and blue. For I'm riding up the Christmas trail to you, old folks, I'm a-riding up the Christmas trail to you. Oh, maybe it was good when the whinny of the spring Had wheedled me to hoppin' of the bars, And livin' in the shadow of a sailin' buzzard's wing, And sleepin' underneath a roof of stars. But the bright campfire light only dances for a night, While the home fire burns forever clear and true. So round the year I circle back to you, old folks, Round the roving year I circle back to you. Oh, maybe it was good when the reckless summer sun Had shot a charge of fire through my veins, And I milled around the whiskey and the fightin' and the fun Among the other mavericks drifted from the plains. I, the pot, bubbled hot, while you reckoned I'd forgot, and the devil smacked the young blood in his stew. Yet I'm lovin' every mile that's nearer you, good folks, lovin' every blessed mile that's nearer you. Oh, maybe it was good at the round-up in the fall, when the clouds of ball and dust before us ran, and the pride of rope and saddle was a drivin' of us all to the stretch of nerve and muscle, man and man. But the pride sort of died, when the man got weary-eyed, T'was a sleepy boy that rode the night guard through, And he dreamed himself along a trail to you, old folks, Dreamed himself along a happy trail to you. The coyote's winter howl cuts the dusk behind the hill, But the ranch's shining window I can see. And though I don't deserve it, and I reckon never will, There'll be room beside the fire kept for me. Skimp my plate because I'm late. Let me hit the old kid gate, for tonight I'm stumbling tired of the new. And I'm riding up the Christmas trail to you, old folks. I'm a riding up the Christmas trail to you. End of section six. Section seven of Sun and Saddle Leather by Badger Clark. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. A Border Affair Spanish is the lovin' tongue, Soft as music, light as spray. T'was a girl I learned it from, Livin' down Sonora way. I don't look much like a lover, Yet I say her love words over, Often when I'm all alone. Mi amor, mi corazón. Nights when she knew where I'd ride, she would listen for my spurs, fling the big doors open wide, raise them laughing eyes of hers. And my heart would nigh stop beatin' when I heard her tender greetin', whispered soft for me alone. Mi amor, mi corazón. Moonlight in the patio, old signora noddin' near, 
me and Juana talkin' low so the Madre couldn't hear. How those hours would go a-flyin', and too soon I'd hear her sighin' in her little sorry tone. Adios, mi corazón. But one time I had to fly for a foolish gamblin' fight, and we said a swift good-bye in that black unlucky night. When I'd loosed her arms from clingin', with her words the hooves kept ringin', as I galloped north alone. Adios, mi corazón. Never seen her since that night. I can't cross the line, you know. She was Mex and I was white. Like as not, it's better so. Yet I've always sort of missed her. Since the last wild night I kissed her. Left her heart and lost my own. Adios, mi corazón. End of section 7Section 8 of Sun and Saddle Leather by Badger Clark. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. The Bunkhouse Orchestra. Wrangle up your mouth harps, drag your banjo out, tune your old guitar till she twangs right stout, for the snow is on the mountains and the wind is on the plain, but we'll cut the chimneys moaning with a livelier refrain. Shining doby fireplace, shadows on the wall, See old Shorty's frivolous toes a-twitchin' at the call. It's the best grand high that there is within the law When seven jolly punchers tackle turkey in the straw. Freezy was the day's ride, lengthy was the trail. Every steer was haughty with a high arched tail. But we held em and we shoved em for our longin' hearts were tried By a yearnin' for tobacco in our dear fireside. Swing her in a stop time, don't you let her droop. You're about as tuneful as a coyote with the croup. I the cold wind bit when we drifted down the draw, but we drifted on to comfort and to turkey in the straw. Snarlin' when the rain whipped, cussin' at the ford, every mile of twenty was a long discord. But the night is brimmin' music and its glory is complete when the eye is razzle-dazzled by the flip of Shorty's feet. Snappy for the dance now, fill she up and shoots. Don't he beat the devil's wife for jiggin' in his boots? Shorty got throwed high, and we laughed till he was raw. But tonight he's done forget it, prancin' turkey in the straw. Rainy dark or firelight, bacon rind or pie, livin' is a luxury that don't come high. Oh, be happy and unruly while our years and luck allow, for we all must die or marry less than forty years from now. Lively on the last turn, loper to the death. Reddy's soul is willin', but he's gettin' short of breath. Ay, the storm wind sings, and old trouble sucks his paw, when we have an hour of firelight set to turkey in the straw. End of section 8 Section 9 of Sun and Saddle Leather by Badger Clark this LibriVox recording is in the public domain. The Outlaw When my rope takes hold on a two-year-old, by the foot or the neck or the horn, he can plunge and fight till his eyes go white, but I'll throw him, sure as you're born. Though the taut ropes sing like a banjo string, and the ladder goes creak and strain, yet I got no fear of an outlaw steer, and I'll tumble him on the plain. For a man is a man, but a steer is a beast, and the man is the boss of the herd, and each of the bunch from the biggest to least must come down when he says the word. When my leg swings cross on an outlaw hoss, and my spurs clinch into his hide, he can rar and pitch over hill and ditch, but wherever he goes I'll ride. Let him spin and flop like a crazy top, or flit like a wind-whipped smoke, but he'll know the feel of my rowled heel till he's happy to own he's broke. For a man is a man, and a hoss is a brute, and the hoss may be prince of his clan, but he'll bow to the bit in the steel-shod boot, and own that his boss is the man. When the devil at rest underneath my vest gets up and begins to paw, and my hot tongue strains at its bridle reins, then I tackle the real outlaw. When I get plumb riled, and my sense goes wild, and my temper is fractious growed, if he'll hump his neck just a trifle in speck, then it's dollars to dimes I'm throwed. 
for a man is a man, but he's partly a beast. He can brag till he makes you deaf. But the one lone brute from the west to the east that he can't quite break is himself. End of section 9section 10 of sun and saddle leather by badger clark this librivox recording is in the public domain the legend of boastful bill at a round up on the gilly one sweet morning long ago ten of us was throwed right freely by a hoss from idaho and we thought he'd go a beggin for a man to break his pride till a hitchin up one leg and boastful bill cut loose and cried I'm an ornery proposition for to hurt. I fulfill my earthly mission with a quirt. I can ride the highest liver tween the Gulf and Powder River, and I'll break this thing as easy as I'd flirt. So Bill climbed the Northern Fury, and they mangled up the air, till a native of Missouri would have owned his brag was fair. Though the plunges kept him reelin' and the wind it flapped his shirt, loud above the hosses squealin' we could hear our friend assert. I'm the one to take such rakins as a joke. Someone hand me up the makins of a smoke. If you think my fame needs brightening, why, I'll rope a streak of lightning, and I'll cinch him up and spur him till he's broke. Then one caper of revulsion broke that hoss's back in two. Cinches snapped in the convulsion, skyward man and saddle flew. Up he mounted, never lagging, while we watched him through our tears. And his last thin bit of bragging came a-droppin' to our ears. If you'd ever watched my habits very close, you would know I broke such rabbits by the gross. I have kept my talent hiding. I'm too good for earthly riding, and I'm off to bust the lightnings. Adios. Years have gone since that ascension. Boastful Bill ain't never lit. So we reckon that he's wrenching some celestial outlaw's bit. When the night rain beats our slickers and the wind is swift and stout, and the lightning flares and flickers, we can sometimes hear him shout, I'm a bronco twistin' wonder on the fly, I'm the ridin' son of thunder of the sky, Hi, you earthlings, shut your winders, while we're rippin' clouds to flinders, if this blue-eyed darling kicks at you, you die. Stardust on his chaps and saddle, scornful still of jar and jolt, He'll come back some day a straddle of a bald-faced thunderbolt. And the thin-skinned generation of that dim and distant day sure will stare with admiration when they hear old Boastful say, I was first, as old raw hiders all confessed. Now I'm last of all rough riders and the best. Huh, you soft and dainty floaters with your aeroplanes and motors. Huh, are you the great-grandchildren of the West? End of section 10. Section 11 of Sun and Saddle Leather by Badger Clark. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. The Tide Maverick. Lay on the iron. The tie holds fast, and my wild record closes. This maverick is down at last, just roped and tied with roses. And one small girl's to blame for it, yet I don't fight with shame for it. Lay on the iron, I'm game for it, just roped and tied with roses. I loped among the wildest band of saddle-hatin' winners, gay colts that never felt a brand and scarred old outlaw sinners. The wind was rain and guide to us, the world was pasture wide to us, and our wild name was pride to us, high-headed bronco sinners. So, loose and light, we raced and fought, and every range we tasted. But now, since I'm corralled and caught, I know them days were wasted. From now the all-day gate for me, the trail that's hard but straight for me. For down that trail, who'll wait for me? I them old days were wasted. But though I'm broke, I'll never be a saddle-marked old groaner, for never worthless bronc like me 
got such a gentle owner. There could be colt days glad as mine, or outlaw runs as mad as mine, or rope flung falls as bad as mine, but never such an owner. Lay on the iron and lay it red, I'll take it kind and clever. Who wouldn't hold a prouder head to wear that mark forever? I'll never break and stray from her. I'd starve and die away from her. Lay on the iron, it's play from her, and brand me hers forever. End of section 11section 12 of sun and saddle leather by badger clark this librivox recording is in the public domain a roundup lullaby desert blue and silver in the still moonshine coyote yappin' lazy on the hill sleepy winks of lightning down the far skyline time for millin cattle to be still so now the lightning's far away, the coyote's nothing skeery. He's singin' to his dearie. He ya, tamalala day. Settle down, you cattle, till the mornin'. Nothin' out the hazy range that you folks need. Nothin' we can see to take your eye. Yet we got to watch you, or you'd all stampede, plungin' down some royal bank to die. So now, for still the shadows stay, the moon is slow and steady, the sun comes when he's ready. He ya, tamalala day, no use running out to meet the morning. Cows and men are foolish when the light grows dim, dreaming of a land too far to see. There you dream is waving grass and streams that brim, and it often seems the same to me. So now, for dreams they never pay, the dust it keeps us blinkin', we're seven miles from drinkin'. He ya tamalala day, but we got to stand it till the mornin'. Mostly it's a moonlight world our trail winds through, can't see much beyond our saddle horns. Always far away is misty silver blue, always underfoot its rocks and thorns. So now, it must be this away, the lonesome owl a callin, the mournful coyote squallin. He ya, tamalala day, mockin' birds don't sing till the mornin'. Always seeing way off dreams of silver blue, always feeling thorns that slab and sting. Yet stampedin never made a dream come true, so I ride around myself and sing. So now, a man has got to stay, a likin or a hatin, but workin on and waitin. He ya, tamalala day. All of us are waiting for the morning. End of section 12. Section 13 of Sun and Saddle Leather by Badger Clark. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. The Trail of Love. My love was swift and slender as an antelope at play, and her eyes were gray and tender as the east at break of day, and I sure was shaky-hearted, and her flower face was pale. On that silver night we parted, when I sang along the trail. Forever, forever, O oh moon above the pine, like the mate and birds in springtime, I will twitter while you shine. Rich as ore with gold a glowin, sweet as sparklin' springs a flowin, strong as redwoods ever growin, so will be this love of mine. A road across the river, and beyond the far divide, till the echo of forever staggered faint behind and died. And the long trail smiled and beckoned, and the free wind blowed so sweet, that life's gayest tune, I reckoned, 
was my hoss's ringin' feet. Forever, forever, O oh stars, look down and sigh, For a poison spring will sparkle, And the trust in drinker die, And a roving bird will twitter, And a worthless rock will glitter, And the maiden's love is bitter, When the man is proved a lie. Last the rover's circle guidin' Brought me where I used to be, And I met her gaily ridin', with a smarter man than me. Then I raised my dusty cover, but she didn't see nor hear, so I hummed the old tune over, laughing in my hoss's ear. If the snowflake specks the desert, or the yucca blooms a while, ay, what gloom the mountain covers, where the drifting cloud shade hovers, ay, the trail of parted lovers, where forever lasts a mile. End of section 13section 14 of Sun and Saddle Leather by Badger Clark This LibriVox recording is in the public domain Batchin Our lives are hid our trails are strange we're scattered through the west in canyon cool on blistered range or windy mountain crest wherever nature drops her ears and bears her claws to scratch from yuma to the north frontiers you'll likely find the batch you will the shy and sober batch our days are sun and storm and mist the same as any life except that in our trouble list we never count a wife each has a reason why he's lone but keeps it neath his hat or if he's got to tell someone, confides it to his cat. He does, just tells it to his cat. We're young or old or slow or fast, but all plumb versatile. The mighty batch that fires the blast can serve up beans in style. The batch that ropes the plunging cows can mix the biscuits true. We earn our grub by dripping brows, and cook it by em too. We do, we cook it by em too. We like to breathe unbranded air, be free of foot and mind, and go or stay or sing or swear, whichever we're inclined. An appetite, a conscience clear, a pipe that's rich and old, our loves that always bless and cheer, and never cry nor scold. They don't, they never cry nor scold. Old Adam batched some ages back, and smoked his pipe so free, a loafin' in a palm-leaf shack beneath a mango tree. He'd best have stuck to batchin' ways, and scripture proves the same. For Adam's only happy days was for the woman came. They was all for the woman came. End of section 14 Section 15 of Sun and Saddle Leather by Badger Clark. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. The Glory Trail. Way high up the Mogollons, among the mountain tops, a lion cleaned a yearling's bones and licked his thankful chops. When on the picture, who should ride a trippin' down a slope? But high chin Bob with sinful pride and maverick hungry rope. Oh, glory be to me, says he and fame's unfading flowers. All meddlin' hands are far away. I ride my good top hoss today, and I'm top rope of the lazy jay. Hi, kitty cat, you're ours. That lion licked his paw so brown, and dreamed soft dreams of veal. And then the circlin' loop sung down and roped him round his meal. He yowled quick fury to the world, till all the hills yelled back. The top hoss gave a snort and whirled, and Bob caught up the slack. Oh, glory be to me, laughs he, we hit the glory trail. No human man, as I have read, darst loop a raging lion's head, nor ever hoss could drag one dead until we told the tale. Way high up the Mogollons, that top hoss done his best, through whipping brush and rattling stones from canyon floor to crest. But ever when Bob turned and hoped, a limp remains to find, a red-eyed lion, belly-roped, but healthy loped behind. Oh, glory be to me, grunts he, 
this glory trail is rough. Yet even till the judgment morn I'll keep this dally round the horn, for never any hero born could stoop to holler, Nuff! Three sons had rode their circle home, beyond the desert's rim, and turned their star herds loose to roam, the ranges high and dim. Yet up and down and round and cross Bob pounded weak and wan, for pride still glued him to his hoss, and glory drove him on. Oh, glory be to me, sighs he, he can't be drugged to death. But now I know beyond a doubt them heroes I have read about was only fools that stuck it out to end of mortal breath. Way high up the Mogollons, a prospect man did swear, that moon dreams melted down his bones and hoisted up his hair. A ribby cow hoss thundered by, a lion trailed along. A rider gaunt but chin on high yelled out a crazy song. Oh, glory be to me, cries he, and to my noble noose. Oh, stranger, tell my pards below, I took a rambling dream in tow, and if I never lay him low, I'll never turn him loose. End of section 15section 16 of sun and saddle leather by badger clark this librivox recording is in the public domain bacon you're salty and greasy and smoky as sin but of all grub we love you the best you've stuck to us closer than nighest of kin and helped us win out in the west you froze with us up on the laramie trail you sweat with us down at Tucson. When Injun was painted and white man was pale, you nerved us to grip our last chance by the tail and load up our colts and hang on. You've sizzled by mountain and mesa and plain over campfires of sagebrush and oak. The breezes that blow from the Platte to the main have carried your savory smoke. You're friendly to miner or puncher or priest. You're as good in December as May. You always came in when the fresh meat had ceased, and the round course of empire to westward was greased by the bacon we fried on the way. We said that you weren't fit for white men to eat, and your virtues we often forget. We've called you by names that I darsn't repeat, but we love you and swear by you yet. Here's to you, old bacon, fat, lean streak, and rind, all the westerners join in the toast. From mesquite and yucca to sagebrush and pine, from Canada down to the Mexican line, from Omaha out to the coast. End of section 16. Section 17 of Sun and Saddle Leather by Badger Clark. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. The Lost Partner. I ride alone and hate the boys I meet. Today, some way, their laughing hurts me so. I hate the mocking birds in the mesquite, yet I liked them just a week ago. I hate the steady sun that glares and glares. The bird songs make me sore. I seem the only thing on earth that cares, cause Al ain't here no more. T'was just a stumbling hoss, a tangled spur. And when I raised him up so limp and weak, One look before his eyes began to blur, And then the blood that wouldn't let him speak. And him so strong, and yet so quick he died, And after year on year, When we had always trailed it side by side, He went and left me here. We loved each other in the way men do, And never spoke about it, Al and me, But we both knowed, and knowing it so true was more than any woman's kiss could be. We knowed, and if the way was smooth or rough, the weather shine or poor, while I had him, the rest seemed good enough, but he ain't here no more. What is there out beyond the last divide? Seems like that country must be cold and dim. He'd miss this sunny range he used to ride, and he'd miss me, the same as I do him. It's no use thinking. All I'd think or say 
could never make it clear out that dim trail that only leads one way he's gone and left me here the range is empty and the trails are blind and I don't seem but half myself today. I wait to hear him riding up behind, and feel his knee rub mine the good old way. He's dead, and what that means no man can tell. Some call it gone before. Where? I don't know, but God, I know so well that he ain't here no more. End of section 17section 18 of sun and saddle leather by badger clark this librivox recording is in the public domain god's reserves one time way back where the year marks fade god said i see i must lose my west the prettiest part of the world I made, the place where I've always come to rest. For the white man grows till he fights for bread, and he begs and prays for a chance to spread. Yet I won't give all of my last retreat. I'll help him to fight his long trail through. But I'll keep some land from his field and street, the way it was when the world was new. He'll cry for it all, for that's his way, and yet he may understand some day. And so from the painted badlands way to the sun-beat home of the patchy kin, God stripped some places to sand and clay, and dried up the beds where the streams had been. He marked his reserves with these plain signs, and stationed his rangers to guard the lines. Then the white man came, as the east growed old, and blazed his trail with the wreck of war. He riled the rivers to hunt for gold, and found the stuff he was looking for. Then he trampled the engine trails to ruts and gashed through the hills with railroad cuts. He flung out his barbed wire fences wide and plowed up the ground where the grass was high. He stripped off the trees from the mountainside and ground out his ore where the streams run by. Till last came the cities with smoke and roar and the white man was feeling at home once more. But barrenness, loneliness, such like things that gall and grate on the white man's nerves, was the rangers that camped by the bitter springs and guarded the lines of God's reserves. So the folks all shy from the desert land, except maybe a few that can understand. There the world's the same as the day t'was new, with a land as clean as the smokeless sky, and never a noise as the years have flew, but the sound of the warm wind drifting by. And there alone, with a man's world far, there's a chance to think who you really are. And over the reach of the desert bare, when the sun drops low and the day wind stills, sometimes you can almost see him there, as he sits alone on the blue-gray hills, a thinking of things that's beyond our ken, and rest in himself from the noise of men. End of section 18. Section 19 of Sun and Saddle Leather by Badger Clark. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. The Married Man. There's an old pard of mine that sits by his door and watches the evening skies. He sat there a thousand of evenings before and I reckon he will till he dies. El pobre, I reckon he will till he dies. And here through the dim, quiet air, far cattle that call and the crickets that cheep, and his woman a-singin' a kid to sleep in the creak of her rock chair. Once we made camp where the last light would fail, and the east wasn't white till we'd start, but now he is deaf to the call of the trail and the song of the restless heart. El pobre, the song of the restless heart, that you hear in the wind from the dawn, he's left it, with all the good free-footed things, for a slow little song that a tired woman sings, and a smoke when his dry day is gone. 
I've rode in and told him of lands that were strange, where I drifted from glory to dread. He'd tell me the news of his little old range and the cute things his kids had said. El pobre, the cute things his kids had said. And the way six-year Billy could ride, and the dark would creep in from the gray chaparral, and the woman would hum, well, I pitied my pal, and thought of him like he had died. He rides in old circles and looks at old sights, and his life is as flat as a pond. He loves the old skyline he watches of nights, and he don't seem to care for beyond. El pobre, he don't seem to dream of beyond, nor the room he could find there for joy. Ain't you ever uneasy? says I one day, but he only just smiled in a pitying way while he braided a quirt for his boy. He preaches that I ought to fold up my wings, and that even wild geese find a nest, that woman and women are different things, and a saddle nap isn't a rest. El pobre, he's more for the shade and the rest, and he's less for the wind and the fight. Yet out in strange hills, when the blue shadows rise, and I'm tired from the wind and the sun in my eyes, I wonder sometimes if he's right. I've courted the wind, and I've followed her free, from the snows that the low stars have kissed, to the heave and the dip of the wavy old sea, yet I reckon there's something I've missed. El pobre, yes, maybe there's something I've missed, and it maybe is more than I've won, just a door that's my own while the cool shadows creep, and a woman a-singin' my kid to sleep, when I'm tired from the wind and the sun. End of section 19section 20 of sun and saddle leather by badger clark this librivox recording is in the public domain the old cowman i rode across a valley range i hadn't seen for years the trail was all so spoilt and strange it nearly fetched the tears i had to let 10 fences down the fussy lanes ran wrong and each new line would make me frown and hum a morning song. Oh, it's squeak, squeak, squeak. Here I'm stretching of the wire. The nester brand is on the land. I reckon I'll retire. When progress toots her brassy horn and makes her motor buzz, I thank the Lord I wasn't born no later than I was. Twas good to live when all the sod, without no fence nor fuss, belonged in partnership to God, the government, and us. With skylight bounds from east to west and room to go and come, I loved my fellow man the best when he was scattered some. Oh, it's squeak, squeak, squeak. Close and closer cramps the wire. There's hardly any play to back away and call a man a liar. Their house has locks on every door. Their land is in a crate. These ain't the plains of God no more. They're only real estate. There's land where yet no ditchers dig, nor cranks experiment. It's only lovely, free, and big, and isn't worth a cent. I pray to them who come to spoil may wait till I am dead, before they foul that blessed soil with fence and cabbage head. Yet it's squeak, squeak, squeak. Far and farther crawls the wire. To crowd and pinch another inch is all their heart's desire. The world is overstocked with men, and some will see the day when each must keep his little pen, but I'll be far away. When my old soul hunts range and rest beyond the last divide, just plant me in some stretch of west that's sunny, lone, and wide. Let cattle rub my tombstone down, and coyotes mourn their kin. Let hosses paw and trump the mound, but don't you fence it in. Oh, it's squeak, 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 and they pen the land with wire. They figure fence and copper cents where we laughed round the fire. Job cussed his birthday night and morn in his old land of us, but I'm just glad I wasn't born no later than I was. End of section 20 
Section twenty one of Sun and Saddle Leather by Badger Clark. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. The Plainsmen, men of the older, gentler soil, loving the things that their fathers wrought, worn old fields of their fathers' toil, scarred old hills where their fathers fought, loving their land for each ancient trace like a mother dear for her wrinkled face. Such as they can never understand the way we have loved you, young, young land. Born of a free world-wandering race, little we yearned o'er an oft-turned sod. What did we care for the Father's place? Having ours fresh from the hand of God. Who feared the strangeness or wiles of you? when from the unreckoned miles of you, thrilling the wind with a sweet command, youth unto youth called young, young land. North, where the hurrying seasons changed, over great gray plains where the trails lay long, free as the sweep in Chinook we ranged, setting our days to a saddle song. Through the icy challenge you flung to us, through your shy spring kisses that clung to us, following far as the rainbow spanned, fiercely we wooed you, young, young land. South, where the sullen black mountains guard, limitless shimmering lands of the sun, over blinding trails where the hoofs rang hard, laughing or cursing, we rode and won, drunk with the virgin white fire of you, hotter than thirst was desire of you, straight in our faces you burned your brand, Marking your chosen ones, young, young land. When did we long for the sheltered gloom Of the older game with its cautious odds? Gloried we always in sun and room, Spending our strength like the younger gods. By the wild sweet ardor that ran in us, By the pain that tested the man in us, By the shadowy springs and the glaring sand, You were our true love young young land when the last free trail is a prim fenced land and our graves grow weeds through forgetful maze richer and statelier then you'll reign mother of men whom the world will praise and your sons will love you and sigh for you labor and battle and die for you but never the fondest will understand the way we have loved you young Young Land End of Section twenty one Section twenty two of Sun and Saddle Leather by Badger Clark. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. The Westerner My fathers sleep on the sunrise plains, and each one sleeps alone. Their trails may dim to the grass and rains, For I choose to make my own. I lay proud claim to their blood and name, But I lean on no dead kin. My name is mine, for the praise or scorn, And the world began when I was born, And the world is mine to win. They built high towns on their old log sills, Where the great slow rivers gleamed. But with new live rock from the savage hills, I'll build as they only dreamed. The smoke scarce dies where the trail camp lies, Till the rails glint down the pass. The desert springs into fruit and wheat, And I lay the stones of a solid street Over yesterday's untrod grass. I waste no thought on my neighbor's birth, Or the way he makes his prayer. I grant him a white man's room on earth, If his game is only square. While he plays it straight, I'll call him mate. If he cheats, I'll drop him flat. Old class and rank are a worn-out lie, For all clean men are as good as I, And a king is only that. I dream no dreams of a nurse-made state That will spoon me out my food. A stout heart sings in the fray with fate, And the shock and the sweat are good. From noon to noon all the earthly boon that I ask my God to spare is a little daily bread in store 
with the room to fight the strong for more, and the weak shall get their share. The sunrise plains are a tender haze, and the sunset seas are gray. But I stand here, where the bright skies blaze, over me and the big today. What good to me is a vague may be, or a mournful might have been. For the sun wheels swift from morn to morn, and the world began when I was born, and the world is mine to win. End of section 22「Section 23 of Sun and Saddle Leather by Badger Clark. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. The wind is blowing. My tired hoss knickers for his own home bars. A hoof clicks out a spark. The dim crick flickers to the lonesome stars. The trail twists down the dark. The ridge pines whimper to the pines below. The wind is blowing, and I want you so. The birch has yellowed since I saw you last. The fall haze blued the creeks. The big pine bellowed as the snow swished past, but still, above the peaks, the same stars twinkle that we used to know. The wind is blowing, and I want you so. The stars up yonder wait the end of time, but earth fires soon go black. I trip and wander on the trail I climb, A fool who will look back. To glimpse a fire dead a year ago, The wind is blowing, and I want you so. Who says the lover kills the man in me, Beneath the day's hot blue? This thing hunts cover, and my heart fights free, To laugh an hour or two. But now it wavers like a wounded doe, the wind is blowing, and I want you so. End of section 23 Section 24 of Sun and Saddle Leather by Badger Clark This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. On Boot Hill up from the prairie and through the pines, Over your straggling headboard lines, Winds of the west go by. You must love them, you booted dead, More than the dreamers who died in bed, You old-timers who took your lead Under the open sky. Leathery knights of the dim old trail, Lawful fighters or scamps from jail, Dimly your virtues shine. Yet who am I that I judge your wars, Deeds that my daintier soul abhors, Wide-open sins of the wide outdoors, Manlier sins than mine? Dear old mavericks, customs mend, I would not glory to make an end Marked like a homemade sieve. But with a touch of your own old pride, Grant me to travel the trail I ride, Gamely and gaily, the way you died, Give me the nerve to live. Aye, and for you I will dare assume Some Valhalla of sun and room Over the last divide. There in eternally fenceless west Rest to your souls, if they care to rest, Or else fresh horses beyond the crest And a star-speckled range to ride. End of section 24 End of Sun and Saddle Leather by Badger Clark His wonderful presentation of the West is the quality of universal appeal that makes his work real art. He has tied the West to the universe. The old cowman is not the only one who has wondered who Badger Clark was. Charles Horton Stork, speaking of sun and saddle leather, said, It has splendid flavor and fine artistic handling as well. I should like to know more of the author, whether he was a cowpuncher or merely got inside his psychology by imagination. Badger Clark was brought up in the West. 
As a boy, he lived in Deadwood, South Dakota. The town at that time was trying to live down the reputation for exuberant indecorum which she had acquired during the gold rush. But her five churches operating two hours a week could make little headway against the competition of two dance halls and twenty-six saloons running twenty-four hours a day. Perhaps it was these early impressions that make the piano at Red's in Mr. Clark's later volume, Grass-Grown Trails, so vivid. Scuffing feet and thud of fists, curses hot as fire. Still the music sang of love, longing, lost desire, dreams that never could have been, joys that couldn't stay, while the man upon the floor wiped the blood away. After Clark had grown up in the cow country near the Mexican border, he stumbled unexpectedly into paradise. He was given charge of a small ranch and the responsibility for a bunch of cattle, just large enough to amuse him, but too small to demand a full day's work once a month. The sky was persistently blue, the sunlight was richly golden, the folds of the barren mountains and the wide reaches of the range were full of many lovely colors, and his nearest neighbor was eight miles away. The cow men who dropped in for a meal now and then in the course of their interminable riding appeared to have ridden directly out of the books of adventure with old young faces full of sun wrinkles, careless mouths full of bad grammar, strange oaths and stranger yarns, and hearts, for the most part, as open and shadowless as the country they daily ranged. In the evenings, as Clark placed his boot heels on the porch railing, smote the strings of his guitar, and broke the tense silence of the warm, dry twilight with the song, he often wondered, as his eyes rested dreamily on the spiky yuccas that stood out sharp and black against the clear lemon color, the spirit of them is eternal, the spirit of youth in the open, and their background is God's reserves, the vast reach of western mesa and plain that will always remain free, the way it was when the world was new. Every poem carries a breath of plains wind-flavored with a tang of camp smoke, and varied as they are in tune and tone, they do not contain a single note that is labored or unnatural. They are of native western stock, as indigenous to the soil as the agile cow-ponies, whose hooves evidently beat the time for their swinging measures. And it is this quality, as well as their appealing music, that has already given them such wide popularity, east and west. That they were born in the saddle, and written for love rather than for publication, is a conviction that the reader of them can hardly escape from the impish merriment of From Town to the deep but fearless piety of The Cowboy's Prayer. These songs ring true and are as healthy as the big, bright country whence they came. In 1917, about the time our first edition of Sun and Saddle Leather began to run low, we fortunately discovered L of the Sunset West. Why Hermit Life in the Desert? was traditionally a sad, penitential affair. In a letter to his mother a month or two after settling in Arizona, he found prose too weak to express his utter content and perpetrated his first verses. She, with natural pride, sent the verses to a magazine, the old Pacific Monthly, and a week or two later the desert dweller was astonished beyond measure to receive his first editorial check. The discovery that certain people in the world were willing to pay money for such rhymes as he could write bent the whole course of his subsequent life, for good or evil, and the occasional lyric impulse hardened into a habit which has consumed much of his time and most of his serious thought since that date. The verses written to his mother were Ryden the first poem in his first book, Sun and Saddle Leather. 
and the greater part of the poems in both sun and saddle leather and grass-grown trails were written in arizona sun and saddle leather and grass-grown trails are books of western songs simple and ringing and yet with an ample vision that makes them unique among poems written in a local vernacular. Preface of Sun and Saddle Leather This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Eileen Tipping Sun and Saddle Leather by Badger Clark Preface to the Third Edition Cowboys are the sternest critics of those who would represent the West. No hypocrisy, no bluff, no pose can evade them. Yet cowboys have made Badger Clark's songs their own. So readily have they circulated that often the man who sings the song could not tell you where it started. Many of the poems have become folk songs of the West, we may say of America, for they speak of freedom and the open. Generous has been the praise given Sun and Saddle Leather, but perhaps no criticism has summed up the work so satisfactorily as the comment of the old cowman, who said, You can break me if there's a dead poem in the book. I read the hull of it. Who in the H is this kid Clark anyway? I don't know how he knowed, but he knows. That is what proves Badger Clark the real poet. He knows. Beyond 